electrical engineering with honors in 1992 from gb panth university of agriculture and technology panth nagar mtech with first division from iit bhu in 1994 in electrical engineering he joined drdo having 12 years of teaching experience he completed his phd from iit bombay in 2007 in electrical engineering department he presented a paper in ieee icon in 2004 and was awarded the student award he is associated with r&d activities in various projects of drdo dr arbind kumar good afternoon to everybody last uh, two talks after lunch they were basic research oriented ours is basically the application oriented indian navy has given the requirement to fit a electromagnetic aircraft launch system to its uh, next generation aircraft carrier ships that will be maybe around 220 20 25 30 at present uh, we are using the basic uh, launching methods we will be covering to that uh due to advancement in the technology in various field of engineering the concept of electric warship has been emerged uh this includes some of the new subsystems or the replacement of the conventional mechanical systems being uh, the having the advantage of low volume low weight some of the systems are uh, the electromagnetic railgun electric propulsion high energy lasers aircraft arresting gears and i am going to talk uh, emals in short it is called electromagnetic aircraft launch system and all these systems are integrated together and then it is called as the integrated full electric warship here you can see in the picture this various systems are there and they are integrated because the generating capacity of a electric warship is uh, only the few megawatts 10 to 20 megawatts whereas these systems require a very short duration uh, power of hundreds of megawatts so you have to optimize all the systems uh, basically uh, the present launch method uh, which uh, we are having is the ins uh, vikramadit it is using uh, the ski jump method basically it requires a long runway around 200 to 250 meter long and uh, uh, you can see in the picture it is slightly tilted at the end so that you, uh, the aircraft can get the uplift uh, generally this uh, tilt angle is generally 10 to 15 degree the other countries which generally the, the, the are the us uh, ussr uh, that's uh, russia the china they are uh, using the steam catapult uh, but it is having a uh, lot of limitations the efficiency is very poor as you can see it is 4 to 6% lot of steam is required it is not a closed loop system and and it has already reached to its limit and above all uh, in the future the aircrafts may be going heavier and heavier then the steam catapult may not be uh, working uh, satisfactorily so uh, uh, this country specifically the us is working since last 20 years and uh, maybe uh, this year they are going to uh, fit this electromagnetic aircraft launch system to their aircraft carriers and uh, in addition to uh, us china is also working in the uh, this field since last 10 years uh Uh, the emals is having the advantages of uh, higher launch energy capability uh, it's uh, modular in construction uh, weight and volume and maintenance is uh, uh, low as compared to the steam uh, catapult uh, it's having the reduced life cycle cost 
इंक्रीज कंट्रोलेबिलिटी अवेलेबिलिटी रिलायबिलिटी एंड इफिशेंसी दिस सिस्टम इज हैविंग ओवरऑल इफिशेंसी आई एम टॉकिंग इट इज अराउंड टेन परसेंट एज कम्पेयर टू द स्टीम कैटापॉल्ट इट इज हैविंग द इफिशेंसी ऑफ फोर टू सिक्स परसेंट दो इट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट इज नॉट वेरी न्यू द कॉन्सेप्ट वॉज इवॉल्व बाई वेस्टिंग हाउस इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स and at that time they uh, developed a linear motor based uh, catapult system uh, this system was around uh, 1400 feet long and uh, they could achieve uh, a speed of 226 miles in 500 feet but that that length is also quite high compared to the aircraft carriers so the the navy's requirement in your navy's requirement is uh, the, it is to be fitted uh, at aircraft carriers they gave a name as emals and it can launch an aircraft from 4.5 to 45 tons generally uh, the, the, our country is having the aircraft uh, it's in the range of 20 ton but the requirement they have project is uh, because uh, it, it is the future uh, technology and uh, maximum runway length is 100 meter and that includes the 10 meter the braking distance okay and uh, the time between the two launches is 50 seconds and the launch time of an aircraft is 3 seconds only and the end speed uh, which is uh, achievable is 28 to 103 meter per second uh, having the variation of uh, 1.5 zero to 1.5 the launch energy is in the range of uh, 125 megajoules thrust 1.3 and the weight and volume as it is given 225 ton and 425 meter cube so this is the specification uh, given by the indian navy now uh, as i said uh, there are lot of limitations first lim limitation is the generating capacity of an aircraft carrier is uh, 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 15 to 20 megawatt and generally uh, 10 megawatt they will be using for their own critical systems so maximum uh, with power will be available is 10 megawatt for other applications whereas uh, we calculated uh, the, that net power required to launch an aircraft is around 62.5 megawatt considering uh, the efficiency power factor and all these things and uh, and the uh, the input energy Uh, uh, sorry the input power this is the uh, launch power and this is the input power which will be required uh, by the uh, carrier is 400 mva then again the limitation is 5g uh, maximum acceleration the current density and uh, we had a discussion with uh, some iit professors also uh, he he was asking why we cannot have the rotary motor uh, rather than the linear motors Uh, just we would like to say uh, in the literature it is mentioned that if we are going uh, more than the 200 to 250 meter uh, kilometer per hour then it is not advisable to use the uh, rotary systems it is given in the standard textbook so uh, as a sub system if we we'll see uh, uh, the prime power interface the launch motor uh, the power conversion electronics the launch control energy storage then the energy distribution system these are the broad uh, division of the sub systems just uh, the pictorial view you can see the, the launch motor linear motor uh, then the control console uh, the ship the the power in a, and the energy storage all these things uh, just pictorially we are showing and how they will be interconnected with each other uh, it's showing the power electronics converter the launch power because in general the power uh, which is available it is at 415 volt three phase ac from the ship so how the power will be flowing uh, from uh, the aircraft carrier to the, the linear motor side and we thought of that we can have the regeneration if we can save energy up to 10% of the total braking energy then it will be a great saving so uh, these are the some of the basic specification of uh, the requirement the, again uh, the length of the limb for acceleration this is 100 meter we thought of 
Then the breaking distance, it is 10 meter. That is the total length. It is coming out 100, 100 meter. Then these are some of the other parameters. Then we have done some preliminary uh, calculations also. Uh, what could be the maximum speed and what could be the maximum acceleration? You can see the uh, braking acceleration is very high. Uh, here the aircraft will take off. So here only uh, the shuttle will be available that can bear the acceleration of uh, 300 g or so. Then uh, as a subsystem side, uh, in the literature uh, we have the option either we should go for the linear induction motor, linear synchronous motor, then linear DC motor and a few uh, recent paper we have seen uh, linear switch lattice motors also, uh, they are there in the literature. But uh, if we see overall advantages, uh, we find that the linear induction motor is the best suitable for our requirement. Then again, uh, in the category of linear induction motor, we have con concluded that uh, double sided linear induction motor will be the best suitable. Uh, some de design we have done uh, for the double sided linear induction motor. Uh, so just we want to share that. It is basically the preliminary design around 100 parameters we have calculated and uh, the losses, uh, the equivalent circuit parameters, uh, what will be the weight, volume, all these things we have uh, calculated and though it is a uh, preliminary design. Then uh, we have done the calculation for uh, three uh, aircrafts, uh, the MiG-29A, LCA which is developed by DRDO and 45 ton uh, class of ship. So what will be the speed and how much time it will take to, to launch an uh, aircraft that uh, this velocity versus time it is showing. How uh, the systems will be integrated together, uh, this picture shows the, the input power, then the harmonic filter, then the converter will be there, then again the inverter, EMI filters, uh, this control console, the feedback, all these things. Uh, th these are the uh, basic specification of the power conversion system that is the input voltage, it will be 3300 volt though it is very high for ship application but uh, then uh, if you are not selecting that then the weight and volume again it is going high and high. Then the another system uh, is the uh, flywheel alternator system that is the how to generate uh, the, the huge amount of power for a short duration. Uh, the literature suggests that we should go for the uh, flywheel alternator only. But here we can see that the motor, uh, motor is there, then the flywheel is there, generator is there. So it is a big challenge if we can integrate all the three things together. And uh, we have discussed uh, with some of the IIT faculties, if we can have uh, such type of system, then it will be a uh, great help to the nation. And these are the some of the specification based on our requirement that the maximum speed uh, it can be 3000 rpm. It may be higher but again the question of stability will come at the uh, aircraft. Then the minimum speed is this one, uh, average it is coming out to be this one and the number of disc here uh, is coming out to be 2. Motor at present we have uh, considered as the, the induction motor and the alternator we have considered here as the synchronous. Now here the, some of the systems are already the available. This is a the, uh, 30 megawatt unit the, developed by GE but it is having the fundamental frequency of 50 hertz. So uh, when we are going for the higher frequency such type of devices should be available. Uh, we require a uh, uh, inverter which is having frequency of 100 to uh, around 300 uh, uh, hertz that is the fundamental frequency. So uh, uh, either the devices should be available in that range or we need to change uh, uh, again the uh, our basic concept. It's having uh, this one unit is having the weight of 12 tons and uh, we thought of having around uh, 4 units 
for each uh, uh, aircraft carrier. These are again some of the systems already the being used uh, by, by the commercial uh, naval people. This is the, uh, the direct or control method uh, used by the developed by the ABB and uh, it is being used on the LNG carriers. So some of the things are already being commercialized and uh, many things are still to be done. Uh, the challenges uh, which we uh, foresee is a uh, high power linear induction motor, uh, 100 meter long. Uh, it will be modular in construction, one, maybe 1 meter. Then uh, the power conversion technology, uh, as uh, the last slide says, that it is uh, having the limitation of only the fundamental frequency that is up to 50 hertz, where we are having the requirement of 100 to 300 hertz. Then uh, development of high power disk alternator, that is the energy storage. Then the efficient and large capacity thermal management system. As I said that uh, we require uh, the feedback method, that is the regeneration method. But how to have the regeneration, again it is a question. Then uh, since the voltage is very high, that is the uh, 3300 volt. So a lot of EMI, EMC issues will be there. And uh, then since it is a SIP based application, so how to, uh, suppose we, uh, we have developed the system, how we will be going to test? US having its base huge structure uh, uh, for testing its facility. But uh, the, the, our one of the um, uh, lab is working on uh, AAG. Uh, they, they don't allow to test. We don't have the facility uh, to test such type of system. So again, there will be huge amount to be invested for testing or we, re we require then the, the aircraft carrier itself. Uh, just it's, it's a small uh, animation. We are having the two linear uh, motors in between. Uh, this is the uh, shuttle, that is the rotor. It will be moving and it will be modular in construction. So rather than energizing the whole uh, stators, we will be energizing in the parts. So four parts, sub parts will be there. As the rotor moves, uh, we will be shutting down one part and energizing the another part. So, and to launch an aircraft from here to, uh, to take off, it, uh, the Navy has given the requirement of three seconds. And again, uh, the system should be ready uh, with a huge energy within a one minute of time. So, shuttle has to come back. We have to store the energy and then again our system should be ready within a minute time. So this uh, completes our, our presentation. There are a lot of challenges. We have discussed some of the IIT professors to help us. We are going to, uh, because Navy has already given the requirement uh, to develop such system. Uh, we require help from the academics, uh, IITs and other engineering colleges uh, to help us in the field uh, as I uh, have shown uh, some of the challenging uh, fields in this uh, area. Uh, you are welcome uh, to help us. Uh, we can have the discussion separately. The, the, if you have uh, some new ideas uh, in your mind. Uh, initially, we were having the discussion uh, because uh, I was also new to the field. Uh, we were having the discussion with Professor Chaudhary, uh, Professor Pumalik uh, uh, to help us in the field. Uh, we were not knowing uh, uh, how to proceed uh, because the Navy has given the requirement, so we have to move further. So uh, all of you are welcome. Uh, if you can help us, uh, even uh, we can offer the GRF, SRF. Uh, those uh, uh, students are interested uh, in the field. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Uh, I would invite the audience to ask any questions to have. Yeah, please. Anyway, you are using a flywheel system to store the required impulse energy. So instead of going for a power electronics inverters, why can't you have a 300 hertz generator itself in the base? See, we thought of uh, rather than having 300 hertz, we can have the 400 hertz. Uh, that is the standard. So that is also one possible way. We are not so saying that uh, it's not possible. Just it is we have done the initial design. 
See, generator also then we require to store the energy. See, 300 hertz directly you cannot couple uh, to the uh, to the launch inverter system. The flywheel is still there. Flywheel yeah, is not yeah. taken off. But uh, instead of we have thought of it's, it's not. A, see, that is why the the the, the speed is 3000 rpm. Now uh, people have given some suggestion rather than 3000, we can go for 6000 rpm. That is also one solution. See, again then we have to analyze the stability of the ship. See, as the speed goes high, so uh, as you are suggesting, uh, we can go for 300 hertz, certainly we, can, we, we have a thought on that. So uh, rather than having the 300 hertz, we can have the 400 hertz, that is the standard frequency. Now as uh, uh, the linear motor is concerned, the, because speed cannot increase suddenly, so uh, it will be a closed mechanism. Now speed and the shuttle, there will be close relationship. Because uh, anyway, when you draw energy from the flywheel, uh, you will have the drop in frequency. In if you yes, yeah, certainly, the... certainly. So we require the converter inverter system. Constant frequency we cannot have. Because the, once you are extracting the energy, the flywheel uh, speed will drop. And my second question you have pointed out, what about the EMC issues? You have putting aircraft with the uh, weapons. That is what I have uh, shown, EMI EMC is a great issue. Yeah, with a weapon <laughs> uh, just below a electromagnetic. Yeah, yeah. uh, no, no, so people are already the, the developing and they are. Uh, it is at the test level uh, in US. So it is not that uh, the people have not thought of, but certainly it is a great issue. Thank you. EMI EMC is a great issue. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any more questions? I have one question. Uh, Please. Uh, like the considering the high power requirement of these uh, systems like do the is the present power plant on ships sufficient to supply this or do we need separate uh, no no that is what i uh, have shown in the first slide it is a limitation our generating capacity of uh, a aircraft carrier is generally 15 to 20 megawatt and around 10 megawatt they use for their own critical systems so whatever the spare at present I am talking, suppose I, I am putting uh, this EMAL system at present uh, aircraft carrier, that is INS Vikramadit. So hardly we will be having 10 megawatt spare energy. So certainly you require the storage system that cannot be used the, directly for launch of the aircraft. Thank you very much. Let us uh, let us give Dr. Kumar one hand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to thank Professor Jayanta Mukherjee for chairing the session and as you, uh, some of you may be knowing him, he works in uh, dielectric resonators and uh, RF uh, and uh, RF circuits and uh, you know, so some of you who have come from distant places, if you would like to you know, take his uh, you know, inputs on some of the research areas, you, you can take his appointment and you know, uh, meet him if you wish. Thank you Professor Mukherjee. Thank you very much. Thank you.